Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first video uh, with SOS Study. And today we're going to be covering uh, co the Common Core Standards for Grade 5. And our first lesson will be on operations and algebraic thinking. Now, a very, very important and crucial concept for this chapter is understanding how to write and interpret numerical expressions. So first of all, what you're going to have to do is use parentheses, brackets, or braces in numerical expressions and evaluate expressions with these symbols. So our order of operations will include PEMDAS, and this includes parentheses, uh, which are uh, looking something exactly like this, uh, exponents, and I wanted to add a note here that exponents aren't that important uh, in sixth grade. So uh, our curriculum that I include here won't exactly include concepts uh, that include exponents. Uh, then there's multiplication and division, which are used interchangeably, and addition and subtraction, which are also used interchangeably. Now, first of all, I want to introduce an example uh, in which we, we use PEMDAS in a pretty simple and ordinary manner. So uh, the problem is four times four plus five. Now our first step in the order of operations says parentheses. Since we don't have any parentheses, we can skip that. Second step says exponents. We don't have any exponents here, so we can also skip that. Our third step says multiplication and division. Since we do have multiplication and division here, our first step is to go ahead and multiply four times four to give us 16. Now we keep the plus we keep the five plus five alone since that's not the step right now. Now once we do that, uh, our next step is addition and subtraction. We can see here that sixteen plus five will give us our final answer of twenty one in this example. Now second of all, let's go to a little harder of a problem. Uh, we have eight plus seven in parentheses times two plus five. Our first step is to uh, go ahead and add eight plus seven in the parentheses as that is the first step of PEMDAS. So eight plus seven will give us 15 uh, times two plus five. Now our next step is to go ahead and do multiplication. So here we do the multiplication of 15 times two and we get the answer of 30. So it's gonna be 15 times two plus five and that will become 30 plus five since we have to do multiplication. Now the final step is addition and addition will involve doing 30 plus five and our final answer here will be 35. Now let's go ahead and look at a couple more complex examples and then we're, uh, you're gonna have the opportunity to solve one on your own. So uh, here we have 17, uh, well, first of all, let's start by uh, addressing the parentheses uh, that, are, that are going on here. We have parentheses 17 minus six divided by two plus four times three. So this is a little harder. The first step according to PEMDAS is parentheses. So what we first have to do is 17 minus six divided by two. We have to realize though that there are two operations going on within the parentheses, both subtraction and division. So according to PEMDAS, if we look back, our first step between multiplication slash division and addition slash subtraction is multiplication slash division. As a result, we have to do the division here first. So if we go down here, we're going to see that the next thing we do is 17 minus 3. And the, how we got 3, we did 6 divided by 2. So we have 17 minus 3 in parentheses plus 4 times 3. Now the next step after that is to go ahead and solve whatever's in the parentheses. So in this case, it's going to give you 17 minus 3 equals 14 plus 4 times 3. Now 14 plus 4 times 3. Uh, next step here is no longer the parentheses as we've completely solved that, but instead we have to do the multiplication. The multiplication step here will involve multiplying four times three to give us 12. So once we do that, we get 14 plus 12. And now our only step left is to add them and we get 26. Now let's do one more example and let's go ahead and let you guys do an example on your own. So we have negative two and parentheses one times four minus two divided by two and parentheses plus parentheses six plus two minus three and parentheses. First step, let's go ahead and do the parentheses. So let's start with the first parentheses here. We have negative two parentheses one times four minus two divided by two. Well, according to our PEMDAS rules, we can do multiplication and division interchangeably. So let's do both of these steps together. So we do negative two parentheses, one times four gives us four, as we can see right here, minus two divided by two gives us one right here. So 
Uh, as a result, our second step will have negative two, parentheses, four minus one, and parentheses, plus parentheses, six plus two minus three, and parentheses. Now, uh, if we go ahead and move on, we can simplify even more in the parentheses. Uh, if we look here, we do four minus one to give us three right here. And we can do six plus two minus three to, uh, uh, in a pretty simple manner, uh, we can just simplify down. Six plus two will give us eight, as we can see here, and minus three will stay the same. Then we can do another step and eight minus three will give us five. So uh, essentially we've solved all of the inside of the parentheses so far. Now our next step is to do multiplication slash division. Right here, we see negative two times three is our next step. So uh, simply go to the next step and uh, multiply negative two by three to give you negative six. Uh, negative six will be added to five, and in the final step, uh, you will get the answer of negative one. Pretty simple procedure. Every time, the rule of thumb is to go ahead and do parentheses first, then exponents, which we won't cover for today's lesson, but in a future lesson, we'll go over it. Uh, multiplication and division interchangeably, and addition slash subtraction interchangeably. Okay, uh, you guys can go ahead and try this problem on your own. Uh, I'll give you a moment to pause the video, and then I'll go ahead and solve it. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. It's a pretty simple standard problem. Uh, the first step is to go ahead and do the inside of the parentheses. So we can do nine minus five. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that there. Uh, nine minus five divided by, you have to solve what's inside the parentheses, five times two plus six. Now, our next step is to go ahead and divide. As we can see, uh, the parentheses and uh, has been fully solved. And what we can do is up to us. We can either divide five by five and then multiply it by two, uh, or we can do five times two. Uh, but the rule, this, this may seem as, uh, like the right solution in this case, but the rule says you should solve it from left to right, right? So in this case, we're gonna do five divided by five first and then multiply by two. As a result, let's go ahead and say it's nine minus one times two plus six. Now that means that we can go ahead and do the multiplication uh, on the inside. So it's nine minus two plus six. And then from here, uh, both subtraction and addition are interchangeable. So in this scenario, uh, either or is accepted. So as a result, we can go ahead and do seven plus six, and that'll give us our final answer of, let's go ahead and bold and underline that, 13. Uh, quite, quite a standard problem. Um, sometimes it can get kind of tricky with the dividing and the multiplying right here, but as long as you're careful, um, if you got this answer, great, you got the hang. If you didn't, um, just practice a bit more. It's not too difficult of a concept and you'll catch on pretty soon. Okay. The second part of this lesson, uh, for sixth grade math is analyzing patterns and relationships. Now, there was a very, very strict uh, guideline pushed out that said that you have to generate two numerical patterns using two given rules and identify the relationship between the terms. Now, let's kind of break that down with an example. Let's say they gave us the rule to add three and the starting number was zero, and then they gave us a second sequence where they asked us to add six and the starting number was also zero. Then they want us to generate these terms in, a se in separate sequences. Well, our first sequence is going to be zero, three, six, and nine, because we add three to the term each time. Our second sequence would be zero, six, 12, and 18, because we add six to the term each time. Now, what is the relationship between these? Well, if you, could, if you look closely, the terms in sequence two, which are highlighted right here, are related to the terms in sequence one, because you can see that each term is twice the value of uh, each term in sequence one. So for example, uh, we, we can't really count zero because zero is just a placeholder, but the term six is twice the term three, right here. The term 12 is going to be twice the term six, and the term 18 is going to be twice the term nine. So it's, a, it's a, quite a standard pattern uh, in terms of that. Now, the second part says we have to form ordered pairs consisting of corresponding terms from the two patterns and also graphing the ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. Well, let's break this down with the same example. Uh, we already talked about how we got these sequence numbers right here. And an ordered pair is essentially, uh, if you remember uh, from coordinate geometry, it is essentially uh, planting points on a plane. 
And what that means is we have a standard uh, coordinate plane and we're just gonna plot these points and figure out what the relationship is. So in this case, we formed the coordinate of point zero, zero, which would be at the origin, uh, three comma six, which would be right three up six, uh, six comma 12, which would be right six up 12, and uh, nine comma 18, which would be right nine up 18. Now the relationship between these coordinate points is that of a slope of two. And if you remember, uh, to find the slope of a line, it would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, we would uh, just we can just go ahead and use uh, these two uh, ordered pairs to solve for our slope. And we went ahead and did that. Oh, sorry, not those two. These two. Uh, we went ahead and did that. We did 12 minus 6 divided by 6 minus 3. So uh, quite a standard uh, solving of a problem, but it's just understanding the relationship of ordered pairs. Now, finally, I have an example here for you guys to solve. I will give you a couple seconds to pause the video and give it a shot. Um, and uh, I'll start again when you guys are ready. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and solve this problem. So we're given the rule add two and the starting number is zero and given the rule add eight and the starting number is zero. And we wanna generate the terms in the sequences. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our sequence one. So sequence one, we have the rule add two and the starting number is zero. So if we do that, we get zero, two, four, six. Let's do four terms, that should be enough. Now sequence two, our terms will be zero, eight, 16, and 32. Uh, no, sorry, 0, 8, 16, and 24. Because each time here we're adding 8, while each time here we're adding 2. Oops. Now, the rule here is that we have to understand uh, that each time, uh, while one of them we're adding 2, the other time we're adding 8. And the relationship between these, the relationship between sequence 1 and sequence 2 is that the terms in sequence one and sequence two are four times the terms in sequence one. Now we can see that because eight is four times the value of two. 16 is four times the value of four. 24 is four times the value of six. So that is the relationship of the uh, different sequences here. Second of all, if we wanna go ahead and write ordered pairs, uh, it's pretty simple. We're just going to be pairing them together. So in this case, 0, 0, 2, 8, 4, 16, and um, 6, 24. And if I wanted to find a slope of this line, uh, what we would simply do is do 24. We're using, let's say we want to use these two points. Oops, let's say we want to use these two points right here to find the slope. We would simply do y2 minus y1, so 24 minus 16, divided by uh, x2 minus x1. So in this case, 6 minus 4. Now in this case, 24 minus 16 will give us 8, and 6 minus 4 would give us 2. So as a result, 8 divided by 2 would give us a slope of 4. Pretty simple, standard. Uh, the main takeaway from this part of the lesson is being able to understand how to relate two different sequences and patterns uh, in order to find the slope as well as the relationship. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for uh, listening today, uh, today to today's lesson and uh, we'll cover a different concept next time. Thank you.